non subscription change for Docker desktop for commercial use. I was looking for a solution to use Docker on a Windows environment without Docker desktop. So today we're going to talk about the steps to configure our environment using WSL2 instead. WSL or Windows Subsystem for Linux lets developers run a Linux environment including most common line tools, utilities and applications without the overhead of a traditional virtual machine. So let's get started. Hey teammates, it's me Andrea again. So the first step we need to check is if we have the virtualization enabled in our computer. For this, we need to go to the Tax Manager and then we need to go to the option Performance and the CPU, we can find information for virtualization. If it's enabled, we can check that will be enabled. But if not, you will not see the option there in that part on the performance so in this case probably you need to do some additional steps to enable the virtualization in the BIOS for this I will leave you a URL for some video to configure that part first then we need to turn on some Windows features for this we need to go to the option turn Windows features on on off and then we need to check if the Hyper-V and the Windows Subsystem for Linux are checked because both of these are necessary to run WSL in our computer. And then we need to open the PowerShell as administrator and run the following commands. We need to check first the WSL distributions with the command WSL L dash b to check if we have already some ubuntu or other distribution for linux on our computer and finally we need to install the ubuntu with the command wsl install dash d ubuntu we can install the ubuntu with this command or we can go to the microsoft store and check the ubuntu version that we need in this case i just installed the version with this command and yes with this command you will see that the installation starts and it takes a few minutes and when the process ends it will ask you the user and the password you can confirm the password and then the first step we need to do is ping for Google or some other URL just to check if we have internet inside the WSL virtualization because sometimes when we start to work with this we can realize that at the beginning we don't have any internet any network inside the AWS if it fails we need to go to this URL and download the distribution of WSL VPN kit. We need to download the file WSL VPN kit and, and put this file inside our user location. Then we need to init the PowerShell inside our user location and, and execute the following commands. The first one is to get information from the file and the second one is to install the WSL VPN kit inside our computer. This will provide us the network to work inside the virtualization. And finally we need to execute the command to start the service and at the end we will realize that if we execute the command WSL-L-B, you will see that we have an additional service at the end, WSL VPN Kit. Now we need to do an additional configuration because if we restart our computer and the WSL starts again, you will lose the WSL VPN Kit configuration. So the idea is open the init file from Ubuntu and add the start command from the service WSL VPN kit. 
For this, we need to go to the command line from Ubuntu and execute the command to open the file bash rc. You must write your password and append this command at the end of the file and then you need to save the file. Use the control plus x and then the y and at the end just enter enter again and just confirm that the file is updated and now the idea is exit the WSL console and test if we have network connection inside of virtualization doing a ping again now we're gonna start to do the configurations to prepare our environment to install docker using the following commands and there is something important that you must know and is that you will find the commands and instructions from this video on the guide i will leave you in the description box okay so first we need to execute the command source with this location and we need to download the information from the Ubuntu page you should provide always your password to execute these commands and finally we will leave this information with this now we need to update the Ubuntu distribution with an update and upgrade this will last few minutes while this process ends we're gonna do an additional configuration for this we need to open the URL to install Docker on Windows and for this go to GitHub and download the file Docker X and save it into the folder bin for a computer on the C disk. If we don't have the folder created, you must you must do it. And then you need to add the bin folder to the system environment variable called path. For this, go to the option system properties and edit the property at the location at the end and save. And with this configuration, when you need new command line on Windows, and try to execute that docker command like docker-b you will see that windows finds information from docker in your computer the update process has not finished yet so while that we're gonna create a new system variable called docker host with the value tcp slash slash localhost 2375 this is the docker port this will be our docker direction to connect from windows and this is because we must to do an additional hack to emulate the virtualization ip with the windows ip because both are different but i'm gonna do that config at the end of this video the upgrade process ended and then we need to remove the residue of the from the previous Docker installations. In this case, it's not too necessary because it's the first time we're gonna install Docker, but in future, you could need this. And then the idea is install the official Docker release with the command sudo apt install. We're gonna install Docker CE, Docker CE client, and container IO. This will take a few minutes again and with this process finished we need to execute the docker dash b and you will see that we have our docker version installed and then we need to add our user in the docker group for this we're gonna use this command and we need to replace the user with the user we created in WSL. The next step is already done, which is the download of the docker exe and put it into the beam folder. And finally, this is the last step for this tutorial and it's very important because we're gonna need this if you have a VPN connection 
and you realize that you can access to your Docker from your Windows when you are connected on your VPN. This is because when you are connected, your IP changes inside the virtualization and you must emulate the VPN from your computer with the VPN from the virtualization to access to that as local. For this, it's necessary to get the address from WSL using this command. You need to say the IP from this command because you will use this IP to create the bridge with the local IP from your computer. So save that IP and then open a new PowerShell as administrator. And execute the command netsh and replace the address at the end of the command. Then you need to start your Docker on your local environment with the IP 0000, which is your local host. And when you open a new command shell, you will realize if you run docker run hello world, which is one of the images to test your docker, you will get this information. You must not close your PowerShell and in this case you will see that if I execute the command docker ps-a we will see a new container created as hello world. If we need to get information from different repositories we just have to execute the command docker login and the URL from the repository that you need and pull the images from that repo. And if we execute docker compose, we will realize that it doesn't work inside our machine. So in this case, I have a workaround and the workaround is add the variables, the variable variables inside the docker file. And then you can create a new image from that docker file and you can create a new container from that image. And that's all for this video. I know this is kind of long and difficult and tricky but it's another way to use Docker in your computer. I will leave all the information on the description box. You know this is a kind of learning log for me so we can learn together here. Goodbye. Thank you for watching.